Assalamualaikum, you are a new account executive from Alliance Bank Malaysia Berhad. This is our team member, Nur Nasuha binti Abu Hassan, Humaira binti Muhammad, Nur Aim Bahia binti Jamil and Muhammad Amir Hafiz bin Muhammad Zaini. Assalamualaikum, I am Nur Nasuha binti Abu Hassan. I will start the presentation about the company background of Alliance Bank Malaysia Berhad in Part A Summary Reporting under MFRA's team. Malaysia French Member Hut, now known as Alliance Bank Malaysia Berhad, was established on August 3, 1982. It changed its name to Multipurpose Member Hut in 1996. The bank adopted its current name after the successful merger of seven financial companies in January 2001. Following the completion of a corporate reorganization exercise, the bank assumed the listing status of its holding company, Alliance Financial Group Berhad, and was subsequently listed on the official list of the main market of Rusa Malaysia Securities Merhan on September 26, 2017. Alliance Bank and its two main subsidiaries, Alliance Investment Bank Merhan and Alliance Islamic Bank Merhan, together form a vibrant integrated financial service group that provides banking and financial solutions through its consumer banking, SME banking, corporate and commercial banking, Islamic banking, investment banking, and stockbroking business. Alliance Bank offers quick, easy and responsive service that cater to the demands of its client through a variety of delivery channels including retail branches, privileged banking center, business center, investment bank locations situated around the country as well as mobile and internet banking. Next, I will go to the management approach. In management approach, I will explain about the factor to consider having a segment reporting, type of segment, and chief of decision making CODM and its responsibility. Factor to consider having a segment reporting. The first one is nature of business activities. Business activities include any activity a business engage in for the primary purpose of making a profit. This is a general term that encompasses all the economic activities carried out by a company during the course of business. Operating, investing and financing activities are continuing in the business with a goal of maximizing value for shareholders. Alliance Bank is a finance-related business that has several business activities such as consumer banking, business banking, financial markets, and investment banking. Second, assistance of managers responsible for the activities. A segment manager for an operating segment reports directly to the CODM and communicate with him or her on a frequent basis to go over operating activities, financial results, forecasts, or plans for the segment. The information present to Board of Directors BOD. The company's overall performance and financial status are accurately represented in the information provided to BOD. Assist in evaluating the performance of the business so that rational decisions about resources allocation and profit maximization can be made. For the type of segment, Alliance Bank Business Segment comprise consumer banking, business banking, financial markets, and investment banking. The group consumer banking segment required a loss before tax of RM139.7 million due to the build-up of allowance for expected credit losses related to the economic impact of COVID-19 on our more vulnerable customers. Alliance Bank Business Banking segment comprise corporate, commercial and SME banking record a profit before tax of RM272.8 million which was 16.4% lower than previous financial year. Profit before tax in the group financial market segment increased by 43.2% or RM106.2 million year of year to RM352.3 million. The investment banking segment recorded a profit before tax of RM127 million due to the higher brokerage income. The last one is Chief of Decision Making CODM and its responsibility. The management committee of the group is identified as CODM. CODM may be the CEO, COO, the Senior Management Team or the Board of Directors. CODM of Alliance Bank is the Board of Directors and the Senior Management. Currently, the Alliance Bank Malaysia Berhad Board of Directors is made up of 9 members split by Chairman Tan Sri Dato Ahmad bin Muhammad Dun and Joel Conrich as CEO. The title or titles of the person identified as CODM is not relevant as long as it is the person responsible for making strategic decisions about the entity segment. 
CRDM is responsible for participating in operational choices within an operating segment, resource allocation and performance evaluation of an entity's operating segments. Besides that, CODM regularly reviews the operating results for both sets of components and financial information. Hi and Assalamualaikum. My name is Humaira Menti Muhammad. I want to discuss about segmental report which is consists of reportable segment and non-reportable segment. For reportable segments, the following segment information has been prepared in accordance with MFRS 8 operating segments which defines the requirements for the disclosure of financial information of an entity's operating segments. The operating segments results are prepared and provided to the chief operating decision maker based on the group's internal management reporting reflective of the organization management reporting structure. Alliance-based management Berhad is organized into the following key operating segments which is consumer banking, business banking, financial markets and stock breaking and corporate advisory. For non-reputable segment, information about other business activities and operating segments that are not reputable shall be combined and disclosed in and all other segments categories separately from other reconciliating items. The sources of the revenue included in the all other segments category shall be described. Non-reputable segments for Alliance Bank Malaysia Berhad refer to mainly other business operations such as alternative distribution channels, trustee service and head office. Next, process to identify reputable and non-reputable segments. Once operating segments have been identified, the next step next to be done is to test the segments which quantitative threshold test, 10% threshold test. This is to identify which operating segments are reputable in financial statements. Operating segments that do not meet the 10% threshold requirements are to be combined and disclosed under the all other segments category. The quantitative treasure test comprises three tests which are revenue basis, profit basis and asset basis. For revenue basis, it is reported revenues from sales to external customer and inter-segment sales is 10% or more of the combined revenue of all operating segments. For profit basis, the absolute amount of the segments reported profit or loss is 10% or more of the greater of the combined reported profit of all segments reporting profit or the combined loss of all segments reporting losses. For asset basis, the segments asset are 10% or more of the total assets of all operating segments. But if any segment does not meet the 10% threshold test requirement, it must be discussed and combined under all other segments category. After the determination of the reputable segments of the company, should ensure that the total external revenue attributable to those reputable segments is at least 75% of the entity's total revenue. When the 75% threshold is not met, additional reputable segments should be identified, even if they do not meet the 10% thresholds, until at least 75% of the entity's total external revenue is included in its reputable segments. For our report, we use the revenue basis. The segment is considered a reputable segment if it is 10% or more of the combined revenue of all operating segments. According to the annual report of our company, there is the calculation using the 10% threshold test to assess which of the operating segments is reputable or vice versa. From the result, there are four segments that are reputable for the annual report which are consumer banking 33%, business banking 46%, and financial markets 19%. While the stock breaking and corporate advisory 0.38% and other segments 0% is considered as no reputable segments as it does not meet the 10% threshold test. As for the 75 threshold test, the external revenue that is reputable will be divided with total revenue to know whether it's achieved the 75% or not. This is the calculation of the 75% threshold test. Since Alliance Bank apply revenue basis, the company must do the 75% threshold test. The total external revenue of the reputable segment is more than 75%. Therefore, the existence of reputable segments which are consumer banking, business banking, financial market, stock breaking and corporate advisory will be considered as reputable segments and no need to identify the additional segments in order to achieve the 75% threshold. Thank you Humaira, I am Ra'in Bahia binti Jamil and now we are on the last segmental reporting which is the completion. I will start with the advantages of segmental reporting. The key advantage of segment reporting is transparency. For businesses that operate in different categories or geographic areas, segment reporting can reveal which areas are profitable and which are drains on the bottom line. If the segment reporting shows a business is operating operation are more profitable than the 
emergency operation, it could prompt a change in strategic direction. Then properly, it keeps manager from hiding unprofitable ventures. Next, for better understanding performance on organization. Financial accounting standard is stated that the purpose of segment information is to assist financial statement users in analyzing and understanding the enterprise financial statement by permitting feature prospect. This will help the organization to assess any risks and returns of the enterprise by understanding the performance of organization. Segment reporting also allows stakeholders to get a better sense of fluctuation that might affect overall number. If a business reports much higher earnings from than expected, for example, segment reporting shows where those earnings are coming from. A stakeholder can look at the same report to determine the number if the numbers are sustainable. It's designed to help investors better understand the business and its potential cash flow. Critically, the risk for investment in equity of a company that disclose complete information is lower than that of investment in equity of a company that withholds information. However, there are certain disadvantages that need to be highlighted which are emphasis on the present. Seven reporting can place too much of a focus on short-term numbers. For example, a business might create division just for its online work. That division could run a significant deficit before the right people and infrastructure are in the place. If these losses are outweighed by the company's overall performance, they might not stand out on the financial statements. However, breaking out those numbers as a data point via same reporting can lead to pressure to reduce those losses to enhance short-term earnings. Next, it is disclosure costs. Same reporting involves costs of disclosures. The provision of additional information along with the routine information increase a firm operating costs in terms of cost of collection, processing, and cost of management control system. Cost argument is also related to increased competition that may result from same reporting. Lastly, it's difficulty in providing data. Measurement problems have reached problem of difficulty in providing information while doing segment reporting. Since the measurement problem influences the feasibility of disclosing certain information, one should look at the problem of determining segment information. If we look upon the profit and loss account segments, we immediately run into trouble with the sales figure, particularly in the segment sales. And now, moving on to part B, which is interim report, also known as MFRS 134. Basis of preparation are prepared accordance with the Malaysian financial reporting standards, international financial reporting standards, and the requirement of it is prepared under the historical cost convention as modified by the financial investment at fair value through other comprehensive income. Next, there are two views on method that an internal report can be produced, which are integral method and also discrete method. Under the integral method, interim period is considered to be an integral part of the annual accounting period. Accruals and expenses across all periods must be spread even when you incur this invest in some periods and not in others. While the discrete method treats interim accounting periods in the same manner as annual periods and as such recognize accruals and expenses in the period in which they are incurred. Next, we will discuss on two accounting policy used in preparing the interim report. The first policy that I choose is under MFRS 116, Property, Plan and Equipment. Property, plan and equipment are initially recorded at cost. The cost of an item of property, plan and equipment file initially recognized includes its purchase price and any cost that is directly attributable to bringing the assets to the location and condition necessary for it to be capable of operating in the manner intended by management. Subsequent costs are included in the assets carry amount of recognized as a separate asset as appropriate only when it is probable that future economic benefits associated with the item will flow to the group and the cost of the item can be measured reliably. The carry amount of the repairs part is recognized. All other repairs and maintenance are recognized as expenses in the statements of income during the financial year in which they are incurred. When significant parts of an items of property, plan and equipment have different useful life, they are accounted for as separate items of property, plan and equipment. Subsequent to initial recognition, property, plan and equipment except for freehold land are stated at cost less accumulated depreciation and accumulated impairment loss. The second policy is intangible asset, which are divided into two, goodwill and computer software. Goodwill arises from a business combination and represents the assets of the aggregate of fair value of consideration transferred, the amount of any non contrary interest in the acquiry and the fair value of any previous equity interest in the acquiry over the fair value of the net identifiable assets acquired and liability assumed on the acquisition date. 
if the fair value of consideration transferred the amount of non-controlling interest and the fair value of previously held interest in the acquiry are less than the fair value of the net valuable asset of the acquiry, the resulting gain is recognized in statements of income. Goodwill is not amortized, but it is tested for a payment annually or more frequently if events or changes in certain terms indicate that it might be impaired and carry at cost less accumulated in payment loss. For the purpose of impairment testing, goodwill acquired in a business combination is allocated to each of the cash generating units, CTU or group of CGUs that it is expected to benefit from the synergies of the combination. Each unit of groups of units to which the goodwill is allocated represent the lowest level within the entity at which the goodwill is monitored for internal management purpose. Goodwill is monitored at operating segment level. The carrying value of goodwill is compared to the recoverable amount, which is the higher value in use in and the fair value less cost of disposal. Any impairment is recognized immediately as an expense and is not subsequently reversed. Next, I will proceed with types of interim reports prepared by the company. There are two types of interim reporting. The first one is complete set of financial statement which is MFRS 101 which consists of four primary financial statements. The four primary financial statement include statement of financial position, statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income, Statement of cash flow and statement of changes in liquidity. The second one is condensed financial statement, which is MFRS 134, which include condensed statement of financial position, condensed statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income, condensed statement of cash flow, and condensed statement of changes in equity. As for Alliance Bank, they choose to prepare condensed financial statement for their interim report instead of using complete set of financial statement. Moving on to identify the period for current and comparative of each statement prepared by the company. The first one is statement of financial position. For current interim report is from 1st of January 2021 until 30th June 2021. The comparative of this statement of financial position will be immediately preceding year as at 2020 starting from 1st January 2020 until 30th June 2020. Moving on to statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income. The six months years ended for 2021. Current interim report is from 1st January 2021 to 30th June 2021. The comparative for six months ended 2020 is from 1st January 2020 until 30th June 2020. Meanwhile, for 12 months, which year to date, the current interim report is from 1st of April 2020 until 31st March 2021, while for comparative is from 1st of April 2019 until 31st March 2020. Next will be statement of cash flow, where current interim report is from 1st of January 2021 until 30th June 2021. The comparative of this statement of cash flow starting from 1st January 2020 until 30, 30 June 2020. Current interim report and comparative of statement of changes in equity is the same as statement of cash flow because both are calculated based on cumulative period. Next requirement is to propose any two adjustments made by company to be included in the interim report and prepare an extract of any one of the financial statements to show the effect before and after adjustment. There are two ways of adjustment made by the company to be included into their interim report. The first one is adjustment on their other receivable and the second one is on depreciation first one is regarding with other receivable of the company gross amount of other receivable is 120 million 168 thousand but due to unforeseen circumstances there will be 10 percent uncollectible rate the 10 percent from gross amount is need to be expanded of into statement of profit or loss amounted 12 million 16,800 and another 19 percent amounted 108 million 151,200 and will be show into the statement of financial position last but not least I will proceed with the extract of condensed statement of financial position as at 31st March 2021 before the adjustment item other receivable is amounted 100 20 million 168 thousand but the after adjustment it is reduced 
to 108 million 150 1200 another item is on motor vehicle under property plan and equipment item before the adjustment it shows the amount of 856000 and it is reduced to 684800